The return up for Parlo. Leaves it off. Here's Mia Hamm. In the box. The shot. Go. She's got the record. Hey everyone, my name is Sabria Whitaker and I'm the founder of Grow the Game. Erica Piancastelli here, Tokyo 2021 Olympian. This is Carly Jackson, professional goaltender for the Buffalo Buttes. Hey everyone, this is Connor Moore, the social media manager of the Chicago Sky. You are now listening to Women's Sports Matter. Women's Sports Matter. Hosted by Gianna Belcastro. Arete Okunbalole wins the national championship for Notre Dame. Welcome to Women's Sports Matter, your one-stop shop for all things women's sports. My name is Gianna Belcastro, and I am your host. First of all, I would like to say I hope you enjoyed my live show from Fan Expo. That was last, last week's episode, and if you watched it when it was happening live, that's great. If you didn't have the chance to watch it, well, guess up. It's now up everywhere. You can go listen to it. There were about five people sitting in the audience, including my friend that I brought with me. And then the guy that was uh, producing everything. So that was nice. Um, I've done live shows before. The first live show I ever did, I think I ranted for an hour. Not ranted. Uh, rambled is the correct word. Just going on and on about a different topic. And that's exactly what happened again. That's exactly what happened again uh, this time. Wow. My only criticism for Fan Expo is that um, don't throw us in the last room at the end of a hallway because no one, no one came to my show compared to last year where I had the highest attended podcast recording. So I probably had the least amount of attendance this year. I had some awesome people in the crowd. They were very attentive, listening, asking questions. I really appreciate that. Someone came up to me afterwards, talked a little bit about the lack of women's hockey in Chicago, which may or may not be fixed sometime soon. Um, see what the PHF and PWHPA do. Every time I have to say the longer one, the PHWPA or whatever it's called, um, I have to do a little dance because I have to remember the order of it and somehow that helps. So if you're watching and I, you just saw me sway a little bit like I am now, uh, that is why. <laughs> that is why I'm swaying because I can't remember the long ass uh, hockey group and sorry for cussing. Sorry to my family for cussing at Fan Expo and, and just now I apologize, but I will continue to do it because it's my show and I can't cuss anywhere else. So I'm going to do it here. Um, I don't usually record standalone episodes because I don't think people are interested in hearing just me talk. Um, that's what I've gathered <laughs> is no one wants to listen to me talk only for uh, half an hour. I also don't want to hear myself talk for half an hour. So yeah, but it's kind of nice because it's like I'm going to sit here and I'm going to talk about my previous weekend from two weekends ago. And I don't know, I, I, I don't believe that everyone that listens to the show is on Twitter. So this is like the perfect time to articulate my thoughts and you know, just, I'm a podcast host. I have this platform. What I'm supposed to be doing is talking to people. Um, so I'm going to tell you about my experience covering the WNBA All-Star Weekend. We're going to 
go back in time to when it was announced first in April. They announced All-Star Game in April. I got excited because I was like, oh my God, All-Star Weekend is going to be here. And then the first question that popped into my head was, am I going to cover it? And I thought to myself, no. No, I don't want to do that because I I still get anxious about doing like in-person things. Like doing a live show is hard. Um, going to convention, going to that convention was hard in January um, because you have this booth. You're just there and you're you're talking to people that pass by. You got to like get into your podcast mode right away. You're trying to sell your brand. And it's just like, this is different because you have to be professional, I guess, is what I'm trying to get towards. The people that cover these big events come in from all across the United States and they write for a living or they work for Bleacher Report or like some media group. They do that for a living. Me? I don't. I don't get paid to do anything. I mean, I I have a sponsor this year. Other ones are in the works, possibly. And I think I was just scared because it's like, I am not a journalist. And I'm going to touch on that later. I'm not a journalist. I don't, you know, write for the New York Times. And this is not my job. Um, I'm a fan of the league. I'm a fan of multiple women's sports leagues. This is just like for fun thing, for funsies thing that I do. and. I'd rather experience everything as a fan. So I buy tickets a month later. I buy tickets in May because I think they're going to sell out. They don't. The tickets do not sell out. It's very close to capacity. Over 9,000 people went. There's just a little bit over of 10,000 for capacity at Winchester Arena. So that was nice to see. I buy the tickets. And then... um, This is even before the WSM rebrand is even, you know, in in talks. Uh, I get in touch with C, who just launched uh, Don't Touch My Jersey this previous week. So if you're not subscribed to Don't Touch My Jersey, go subscribe right now. Pause this or keep playing it. Go subscribe to it. Go follow on socials. Just look up Don't Touch My Jersey. You'll find it. It's also listed in the description. Go follow, please. Thank you. And so C and I were talking about possibly just like attending the game together because I had bought two tickets. And then fast forward to end of June, C tells me that they can't go anymore. And then um, won't be able to make it to Chicago because we were going to do stuff together um we were going to do fan expo together that was going to be like a little collab of women's sports matter and don't touch my jersey and that was going to be i wanted it to be c's first episode you know you go and you do this convention put a live show up there you go so i ended up doing the convention by myself which have you seen if you listened or you watched the the live Um, I'm sorry about the chair joke. I'm not sorry about it, actually. I posted it on TikTok. I'm going going to go off on a little tangent here. Um, I posted the video on TikTok. Basically, the video is me. It's like 20 seconds long. It's like, oh, you know, like, I love doing live shows. But one thing I hate is that, you know, I just host this show by myself. And so I've got nobody to talk to. And it's like, I asked this chair right here, like, you know, if someone was sitting right here, I'd ask them, you know, a question. And I turn to the chair and I, and I go, so how do you like chair? How do you feel about women's sports? And, um, I think that's the funniest thing I've ever said on this podcast. (laughs) Um, no, I've said funnier things, probably calling out my sister at one point, but I made a joke. People, (laughs) someone someone commented on the tiktok that i posted of it saying not everybody needs a podcast well guess what i want one i want a podcast it's not a need it's a want um but 
if that triggers you so much to post a comment on my TikTok, I just have to say I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry that you felt the need to comment on my TikTok because I think it's the funniest thing in the world and I posted it for that reason. Um, Post it on social. Sent it to my family. <laughs> um, I think it's hilarious. And that that's me addressing the chair thing. So I'm sorry, not sorry. And um, also at the convention, I filmed a little video asking people about women's sports trivia. And only a few people got questions right out of the, I want to say five that I asked. Well, one and a half answers were correct. So somebody didn't know who the Chicago Sky were. I didn't know if they were from Illinois because the convention was in Rosemont. So that's not that far from the city. And yeah, I mean, go check it out. It's on socials. It's on the Women's Sports Matter TikTok would probably be the easiest way to find it. I have to upload it to YouTube. I haven't done that yet. Um, But yeah, I had fun at the convention. My only thing is like, don't put your podcasters in the back of a hallway where nobody can find you i mean if that's the case again i wouldn't feel inclined to go back to the convention to do my show when nobody's gonna show up so um and i did teach people about a lot of stuff so that was nice uh again people were listening and it was, it was a good time. That was just my only one thing. But going back to All-Star Weekend. So we were going to, C and I were going to do the convention together. Then I couldn't make it to Chicago anymore. So I was like, shoot. I don't have anyone to go to the All-Star game with. What the hell am I going to do? And I tell my mom, I was like, keep your Sunday open. We're going to this game. And she's like, okay. That solved my problem because I was not driving to the city. Um, she was going to drive to the city. And that's why I asked her. Also, because I want to spend time with my mother before I leave to go to school. But mostly because I didn't want to drive. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, of course. And I, I'm signed up for Chicago Sky Media emails. And... I got an email from the PR team um, with a forwarded message from NBA communications because the NBA and WNBA PR people are the same, I guess, for league wise. And so I read this email and it's got like the tentative schedule for WNBA live and you know, all the events happening in All-Star Weekend. And then there's a little paragraph about applying to be in the, getting a media pass. And so I thought to myself, oh, that would be cool to do. But I don't have anyone to do it with. So that's nice. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm too nervous. I don't want to. Um, I've never done this before. And especially at such a huge level, like why, why would that be my first thing that I do? This huge event, why, why would that be my first? And I look at the email, I'm like, oh, that's cool. At least I know what's going on. Um, Which the public doesn't even know about this until a week before the all-star um weekend happens which is a thing that i will jump i will talk about later we'll jump into that in a little bit i look at it i'm like okay that's cool and then i don't know why i decided to apply something told me to apply i just it i didn't even ask anybody i didn't tell anybody i was applying i was just gonna i was just gonna do it for funsies because I didn't think anything of it. So I applied to the thing, um, which it's not even like filling out an actual application. It's like just filling out your name, your group that you're with, Women's Sports Matter. Um, 
basically it. And somehow, some way, Women's Sports Matter got accepted to attend All-Star Weekend as media. By Women's Sports Matter, I mean me. I got picked to go attend this freaking event as media. I don't know who the hell thought, thought that was a good idea. <laughs> but I don't know who, who thought it was a good idea to let me in <laughs> as media. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. You know, it's just, it's so weird. I think of myself as a, just a 20 year old that does this for fun. And so every time something good happens, I think that's a mistake. Like I'm going to interview this soccer player in a few weeks, maybe a month. And it's going to be one of the biggest interviews that I ever done or, or that I will ever do probably. And it's like, who, who decided this was a good idea? <laughs> like who thought it was like, who I just, I'm, I'm smiling right now because it's just like so surreal and it's such an honor, you know, it's such an honor to be selected with some of the people that I look up to in the media world it was just so surreal. I, I'm watching Stranger Things um, the week before or the Monday before All-Star break happens. And I'm watching Stranger Things and it's this, it's the, it's the last episode. And it's, there's like, a, I don't want to spoil anything <laughs> for people that haven't watched. Um, but it's the, it's like the ending of episode, what is it? Episode nine episode eight whatever the last episode of stranger thing is and there's like maybe an hour left of it and there's a bunch of stuff going on and i have to pause the show because i get an email notification and i open up my email and it says that i was approved to cover all-star weekend as media which is so, again, so surreal and such an honor. I just want to thank whoever um, accepted my application, whoever approved that. Thank you so much. I started crying, not only because of what I was watching on Stranger Things, but also because I just got accepted to do in-person media for the biggest, one of the biggest WNBA events of the year. I'm crying, I'm bawling, and that's how I got accepted. That's how I found out I was accepted. I was watching Stranger Things, and well, you heard about this in the live show if you watched that episode. Um, but it was just, it was such a fun weekend. But there's also there's there were good things and bad things that happened. Um, directly towards me, not so much. Um, just in general, bad things. We'll start off with the good. I get there. I get my media pass, which is behind me, hanging up back here. You see this orange, this thing back, back here, the orange thing. It looks kind of red on my screen. That's my pass. It's huge. It says my name. It says woman sports matter. And it's beautiful. Um, I get there, you know. <laughs> I walk into the, the check-in room. I leave my mom outside. I, I also took my mom with me because, again, I'm not driving to the city. And also, it's like, I want you to experience what I'm a fan of uh, because it's such a great community of people. And it's a really fun time. And I, I wanted my mom to experience the league that I love with this awesome fan fest that was going on and she she enjoyed it so that was nice to hear we check in at the marriott there the media check-in was there and we go i go in i'm like mom stay out here i'm gonna go get my pass because i'm an adult and i know how to do adult things and that was also another thing that i was like Ugh, about is ugh. i'm an adult 
and I'm covering this weekend. Yeah. That, whoa, yeah. Um, sometimes I forget my age. <laughs> um, sometimes I forget I'm a college student and I don't do this for a living. It's just, again, so surreal to, to be doing this the first time ever. Uh, I walk into the room, I get my credential, and then I get this little gift from the league as a thank you for covering the event. And it's this orange shirt that says WNBA on it. And I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like I have a shirt. It's a large though. So I'll be sleeping in that shirt until it shrinks. Hopefully it shrinks. Um, They gave me a large. It's sitting over there. It's a very bright orange shirt. Um, I should have moved it over here from when I was telling the story. But again, like this is, I guess this is what happens when you cover events. You get it. A gift from the league. I walk out of the room and I go over to the side to get some stuff out of my bag and, you know, reorganize. And a bunch of WNBA players are walking past me and I'm like, okay, this is real life. This is real life. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it all in. It's just so surreal to see your favorite players just walk right past you. And, oh, my God, are they tall? And also, oh, my God, I'm so short. And we go downstairs. We go into WNBA Live. And we got there early. So when it first opened, from it opened from 10 to 4. And so we, we were there. I'm like, mom, we're going to be here all day. <laughs> just, just a little reminder. And um, I'm down there with her for about half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, taking it all in. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go upstairs. And I leave my mother, which was weird because I was like, okay, I'm going to go and do adult things now. I'm going to go, I'm going to go cover this event like I'm supposed to. <laughs> Even though I'm not covering it for anything, it's just like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do things. And I walk upstairs. First of all, first of all, I get lost because McCormick, McCormick Place is huge and not all the doors are open and there's no signage. So I'm trying to figure out things and it's like, aha, I feel like a little kid. I don't know where I'm going. I finally figure out how to get inside and I walk upstairs and I go. I go into the room, the media room, where the press conferences are happening. I walk in, and right before my eyes, I see Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart, and Jewel Lloyd at the Seattle Storm answering questions from the media. And I'm like, is this real life? (laughs) That we got three absolute ballers sitting right before my eyes. And then people doing their jobs. Which, again, (laughs) begs the question, is this real life? So I just stand there in shock. I do not ask a question. I'm just there. I'm looking like I'm just listening. Um, I get there a little late, probably with 10 minutes left of the press conference. And I didn't want to ask another question that's been answered already. So I just I chill. Bunch of people leave after that. So there's some seats open for the press conference with. Um. Jackie Young and Arike Ngumbawale and Skylar Diggins Smith. And so I thought to myself, I'm going to ask a question because this is what press members do. I raise my hand, they don't see it. That's fine. The reporters that were already there answered a bunch of questions. I was chilling. It was cool to see. Next up on the circuit, was, I believe, Alyssa Thomas, John Quell Jones, and someone else that I cannot recall. And I did not answer, or I didn't ask them a question. I'm not much of a Connecticut fan. I don't know much about Connecticut. So I just listened. And finally, Emma Mieseman and Kalia Copper walk in and sit down 
And I'm like, this is my favorite team. I have to ask a question. And so I had a bunch of questions written out in my notes app on my phone. I scroll through them. I take a look. I am like, okay, I'm going to ask this one. And I was so nervous. Nervous is an understatement at this point. I was anxious as hell. And it was just, ah. So I raise my hand and I make sure I get the attention because I need to ask these Chicago Sky players a question. I raise my hand. I make sure the guy, I make eye contact with this guy at the beginning of the press conference. It's like, hey, I want to ask a question. This guy comes up to me, hands me a microphone. I'm going to ask a question after the person that is currently talking right now is done. Dude comes back up to me a minute after giving me the microphone and takes it away. And I'm sitting there like, you know, this is not the best start to my first ever in-person press conference. And so the guy whose attention I got, the, the head guy in charge of, you know, um, handing out the microphones and, and calling on people, talks to the guy that took the microphone away from me. <laughs> the dude comes back over and apologizes and hands me the microphone. I'm like, okay, this just made me even more nervous because this dude just took my mic away, left me flustered, and now I'm over here like, ugh. It's finally my turn to ask a question. And I look at the players and I get my video recording on my phone set up because I do not have any type of way to document this otherwise. I hold up my phone. I hold up the microphone to my mouth and I ask them, you know, talk about your journey so far from the beginning of this season to the all-star break. Like, can you talk about the people on your team, maybe some of your coaches, just other people that help you get to this moment right now? And so Clea Copper answered the question. I was hoping Emma would also answer, but that's okay. And it was a really nice answer. And I appreciate that from them. And that is the only question I asked in the entire press conference that I was there. I did not want to stay for all the press conferences because I was thinking about my mom and how I left her downstairs by herself. I told her to make friends and she decided not to make friends. So that's on her. Turns out she was listening to a Title IX conversation with current and former WNBA players. And she told me a little bit about that afterwards. So that was nice to hear. Um, To hear her like taking it all in and learning about some new stuff. And so we were talking about some some of the things they brought up in the conversation. And so she talked to me about the, um, the private jet thing that happened with the New York Liberty. And she was like surprised that the league the league fined New York for that and it was this whole thing and I was explaining it to her I'm like yeah this is what happens here um so I missed all of those team Wilson's press conferences all the players from that team I went to team Stewart's only which is okay I go back downstairs and I forgot what I do next. Oh, I went around to the different things that were going on, the different activities. There's like photo booths. There's um, like those like basketball games where it's got the singular hoop and a bunch of the tiny basketballs and you got to shoot them, whatever, like an arcade type type game. There was the Mountain Dew court, which is the three point, I guess, three point challenge for people at WNBA Live. And um, a little bit, we ate, I had a rib sandwich, which was excellent. My mom got deep dish pizza, which is disgusting. Um, I'm a deep dish pizza hater. We know this. If you listen to my conversation clock with Sabria Whitaker, I hate deep dish. I hate it so much. Anyway, we had lunch. I was like, hey, I'm going to go back upstairs. And um, I'm going to see if I can talk to some people, like chat around a little bit. And 
this is like an hour before the three point contest starts and the skills challenge. And I go upstairs and I look around in the media room and people are typing so fast and having conversations with one another. And I was like, there's no room to sit in here. I'm going to go sit in the press conference room, which is just separated by curtains, by the way. So it's not really rooms. It's just a bunch of chairs set up with black curtains. And I go to start typing my newsletter, which I never start early. (laughs) So there is that. And I took a break from writing to go talk with some of the people that have been on my show before that I haven't met in person. So that was nice to get to meet them face to face instead of through Zoom. And I, after that, I think I went back downstairs for a second and then came back up because of the three point challenge, three point contest and the skills challenge we're going to start. So the media room, when I come back, is empty. I unfortunately was not given a seat to cover this event, which is like, why? I don't even know how many people were left out from from what I know, which is me and another group. Um, why, Why not give everybody a seat? I don't need to be typing away like other people do. Um, So that was fun. I was in the media workroom and I see one of my Twitter friends come in. And so I introduced myself and she said she didn't recognize me. And I was like, that's okay. I'm not a very recognizable person. I think my biggest fear is getting recognized. And there's a few things you could recognize me for. We'll go with that. Um, I One of my biggest fears is like being out in public and someone's like, hey, you're the person that hosts Women's Sports Matter. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Who is that? I don't know. What is that? Huh? I don't know. I don't. I, I know. That's like my biggest fear. Or someone that I used to go to school with is like, oh, hey, what's up, Gianna? How's it going? No, unless I'm like friends with this person, if there's someone that I didn't like or someone that I like had classes with before, but I didn't become friends with and they see me out in public, I'll turn my head so they don't see me. And I hope I don't have to do any interactions with them, but I wouldn't consider myself a recognizable person. I just, I don't post myself that much on my channels as I would maybe like to um i mean on social channels i guess but i wouldn't want to recognize myself i don't wouldn't want anyone to recognize me i'm not a recognizable person and i intend to stay that way <laughs> just a little just a little tangent on uh being recognizable so i go back downstairs one once i'm like the TV is not on in there. And I'm like, they're not treating us right. The people that aren't allowed a seat at the actual um, activities that are going on today that we could go to. So I went back downstairs to watch it with everybody else at WNBA, WNBA Live. Skulls Challenge happens, Sabrina Unescu wins, and then the three-point contest happens, and JCA legend Allie Quigley wins her fourth three-point contest title, the most ever won by a male or female. Can I say one more time? Legend. JCA legend. Chicago Sky legend. Facts, people. Facts. So I watched that happen, and it's pretty damn cool. Uh, The crowd was loving it down there. I wish that the WNBA, however, gave access to this event. 
when Trist Arena was not available that day. So they had to host it in McCormick Place with a very limited audience. The setup looked like a middle school gym. Um, whatever. So after the three-point challenge happens, I decided that well, I decided the day before that I was going to interview some people at the youth clinic that was taking place um, close by to where the stage was at the, the Mountain Dew Court at WNBA Live. So I go there and I meet up with this really awesome person from the WNBA who helped me set this up. And I got to talk to two former players one of them being WNBA legend Cheryl Swoops, who I got to interview, <laughs> which is like weird um, that I get to say that. Um, I just talked to them about, you know, All Star Weekend and, you know, why youth clinics are important, why giving back to the community is important. And honestly, it was just, it was such a joy to see kids enjoying basketball and being in an atmosphere where the focus is women's basketball in particular. There was a bunch of boys a part of the clinic, which you love to see it. And there was a bunch of kids who were taller than me. And I, again, I felt younger than I was and that I am currently. And I felt really short. I'm five two. And I hate every, I just hate everything about it. I hate being 5'2". I'm so, I'm just so, so, so short. I'm tiny and I hate it. Moving on. That day happens. It was amazing. Um, Let's talk about the bad things. I wrote about this in my newsletter. But if you aren't subscribed to the newsletter, there's a link for that down below maybe i actually don't know if there's a link for that there should be it's in my link tree in my social media bios hmm wow i don't even i'm bad at promoting my newsletter anyway in my newsletter i talked about the failures of planning wnba all-star weekend here's a fun fact There was a concert an hour or two after I left WNBA Live. The headliner of this concert is Chicago Sky fan Chance, the rapper, who is a Chicago native. And Kathy Engelbert, the commissioner of the WNBA, was like, hey, we didn't promote this event because of, well, she didn't explicitly say gun violence, but we know that's what she was referring to. So I'm just going to say gun violence for clarity reasons. And the the best part about all of this is that, you know, WNBA Live was outside. It was outside. You know what else was outside going on that weekend? Taste of Chicago, which is a huge event. And if you're in Chicago for Taste of Chicago at any point in time, uh, go check it out because it's really cool. And I've been there maybe once. And I had a blast. The food is amazing. Bunch of great local restaurants. Um, It's a good time. So go check it out. But there were a bunch of outdoor events taking place that weekend. And Kathy chose violence and blamed it on gun violence. WNBA All-Star Weekend was not planned well because of Kathy Engelbert. And that's the facts. The contract for WNBA All-Star Weekend was signed in April 2022 with discussions starting in December of 2021. Kathy did not want the All-Star Weekend to take place in Chicago. She did not want it. And that people, there's proof of that. So I don't know why All-Star Weekend was in Chicago if she didn't want it in there. And she caved, I guess, which means that, you know, the weekend was poorly planned. WNBA Live could have been better. If you planned it out in advance, you could have had the three-point contest and the skills challenge in Wintrust Arena 
four fans to go and attend. Just hit my hand on the table. That's nice. You can sell tickets for fans to go and watch this. Root on, root for their favorite players. There will also be more room for media to attend, but that's also like another thing. Um, it's just there's so many different things you can utilize McCormick Place better. You could partner with more brands because if you announced way more in advance, you could set up local partnerships with you know, local restaurants and local small businesses in Chicago to, you know, showcase their stuff there. And just the whole point of All-Star Weekend is also to show off a, a market. That's what it is. Las Vegas got to do it twice in two years. Um, Connecticut has had it a bunch. Phoenix has had it twice or, or maybe three times. Um, you're showing off these different markets to fans. This could have been great for Chicago, but it wasn't. I am a little mad, especially about the gun violence thing. She let her apologize, but it's like, okay. Um, We've also found out different things about Kathy in terms of political donations. Um, I don't know how one person could like Mitch McConnell. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I'm not going to get political today, but <clears throat> anyway, it could have been planned better. We could have utilized different aspects of the city and things could be a lot more user-friendly. But overall, I had a good time. My mom and I went to the All-Star Game together the next day and it was special. We saw Sil- Sylvia Fowles dunk, which, oh my God, <laughs> to see that happen live was just, you should have seen the place. Uh, you should have seen the players' reactions. My favorite is Emma Meesemans. That was, she knew before Sylvia went up for that dunk. She freaking knew what was going on. Uh, Kelsey Plum was outstanding winning MVP with the tiny, tiny trophy that was probably bought off Amazon. The WNBA and NWSL have something in common, giving away shitty trophies. <laughs> um, the WNBA MVP or All-Star MVP trophy, there's this really great thread on Highlight Her where for every 10 likes I think they did, they made the trophy bigger because <laughs> it's so tiny. And it's just like, why... You know, when they say invest in women, I guess that means also investing in really nice trophies for amazing accomplishments. I don't know. Being the MVP of the ASG is kind of cool. Um, Kelsey Plum tied Maya Moore's scoring record in the All-Star game, which is why she won MVP. And... Jewel Lloyd also tied the most, the record for the most three pointers made in an all star game, which I also believe is a thing Maya Moore did. And anything else special? Um, the four point shot was uh, pretty funny to, to see just the players trying to attempt it. John Quill Jones can shoot. She can shoot. Oh, my God. Can John Quell Jones shoot? Wow. She was just shooting threes like it didn't matter. And honestly, it doesn't because it's the all-star game. But oh, my goodness. Like, she can shoot. She can shoot. Oh, my God. She's phenomenal. <laughs> She's a great player. Um, I had a great time with my mom. I did not want to go to the all-star game as media because I already bought tickets. They were $50 a piece for where we were sitting, which is my mom asked me how much they were. And I'm like, I'm going to refrain. So whenever she listens to this episode, because I know it's not going to she's behind on episodes, um, she can find out how much the tickets cost. So there we go. Or maybe they were $45 a piece. It was something in that range. Anyway, we went to the game. We had a great time. And then I went back home. 
and changed into better looking clothing to go to the Red Stars game as media for the first time. And what a great game to attend to go as media. Um, The Red Stars are playing the North Carolina Courage, who has the, I, how do I, you know, I, should I refrain? The North Carolina Courage currently have this player on a team who I have talked about on the show many, many times before. And I have taken down those episodes, or some of them, because of the things that I say. Because I want to be taken a little bit more seriously. Not so much. But the North Carolina Courage currently have a player on the team that is known to be homophobic. I mean, I don't know how I feel about this on this podcast, okay? So every time this player touched the ball, the Red Stars fans booed her, which I would have too if I wasn't sitting in the press box. Because again, I'm a professional media person. And um, Carson Pickett scores her first ever NWSL goal in the first half of the game, making it one nothing at halftime. And I want to say maybe five minutes after halftime, uh, I want to say Brittany Radcliffe scored the second goal of the game. Don't quote me on that. I don't really know North Carolina's players. Um, Somebody scored. Maybe it wasn't her. It was some blonde person. So there is a bunch of blondes on the team. I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe it was. I'm going to look really quick because I don't want to be wrong. Um, but at that point, I was like. You know, this game is over. I don't have any faith in my team anymore. But. You know, yeah, I was right. Brittany Radcliffe. Oh, actually, okay. Carson Pickett scored in the 22nd minute of the game. Then Brittany Radcliffe scored in the 49th minute of the game. So it's 2-0. Keep that in mind. It's 2-0. And the ref shows 90 minutes after nine minutes are up, show... They show four minutes of stoppage time. There's four minutes of stoppage time, which is a lot of time, okay? Um, And when subs come on during stoppage time, the ref adds another minute to it, but they don't tell us that, obviously. It's just something that they keep up in their noggin. So I think North Carolina makes a sub during stoppage time, Um, but we're not going to get to that yet. Chicago utilizes their rookies so well. They play rookies every game. Um, also, <laughs> Chicago is not does not have a lot of their star players right now. They're normal starters, so that means the coach has to get creative. And so the rookies play a lot, and it's helped them so much get to where they are today, and that's going to be a part of today's explanation of what happened in the game. 90th minute. Plus one. Sarah Griffith scores off this beautiful chip in into the goal. Chips the ball in just perfectly over Roland, who's the keeper for North Carolina. Makes it 2-1 Chicago. They celebrate. They waste no time. They get back into the game. The 90th minute plus five. Plus five. There's a corner. Danny Colaprico kicks the ball. In which Amanda Kowalski heads the ball in, making it a tie game, making it two to two in the 90th minute, plus five, plus five to end the game in a draw. And I know that it seems like, okay, Gianna, it's just a draw. It doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Two rookies stepped up to save Chicago's ass in this game, 
to make it two to two. And this is like the best game that I could have covered this season, honestly. Like, I'm just, whew, this was pretty damn good, honestly. And I was just like, I, you're not allowed to cheer in the press box, but the other reporters were, which is like, okay. And so I just had my hand after Amanda Kowalski scored. I just had my hand, my hands on my head like this. I have my, for people that aren't watching, I have my hands together and just on top of my head, just in shock. My mouth was wide open. Like I, I could not believe it. I could not believe that they had equalized at the last second of the game. That was their last play too. And it's just like the rookies were so important um, or they are so important. And so I went to my first NWSL press conference afterwards and I asked the coach about the overall impact of the rookies this season. And I'm going to pull up the quote, which I'm very glad I didn't have to type out. The Red Stars typed it out for me. So thank you. I asked him about the overall impact of the rookies and he and head coach said it's amazing the success that they've had I think all of them have been really really good they've been contributing every game they come out they do their job they work we have to kick them off the field because they always want to train extra they're loving it they're loving being in the environment you can see that they're enjoying themselves and again I think of all I think all of them have been really good I don't know of another team in any league that has had the kind of contributions from first year players that we've had. He also said that they would not be in the place they are in the standings without them. And I wholeheartedly agree. Chicago has lost a lot of key players this season during, during, uh, due to injuries and pregnancy. Four players are out due to pregnancy. One of them just had their baby, Casey Kruger, had a son, I do not remember the name, but congratulations to the Krugers. And then two, the two people out due to ACLs, Tierna Davidson and Kayla Sharples are out. That's two defenders. We don't have that many defenders on our team. We really need defenders on our team. Hey, Red Stars, if you're listening, go trade for a defender or sign a defender from somewhere because we need the extra help. Um, And you can see that in the Houston and Chicago game that happened this past weekend. But Chicago is currently third overall in the at the in the standings. And they would not be there without the contributions of the rookies. I mean, all the rookies have been phenomenal. Um, Also, with Sarah Lubert coming back from loan from club America. It's just, you know, the people thought this team wouldn't do well. And I'm one of those people. And I already said that, um, this team is truly something else and come playoff time. I'm prepared to be shocked. I'm prepared to just, I'm, I'm prepared to see a red stars championship win if they sign another defender and also if Casey Kruger decides to come back for playoffs. So that's something we have to watch, but the Chicago nut would not be where they're at currently. If it wasn't for the rookies. Cool. Um, that was my weekend from two weeks ago. And then, you know, I go back to, to work after that. <laughs> Just love watching baseball. I, I this previous weekend was some of the longest games we've had all season. So I wasn't particularly fond of that. But I have a whole week off before Cougars games and the Chicago Fire, Chicago Red Stars doubleheader. So um, I will be at the Red Stars Fire doubleheader. I'll be working the Fire game first. And then... Uh, Cause I sell 50, 50 tickets. So if you're going and you see me, you best be buying 50, 50 tickets from me. I'm trying to win shit. Okay. I'm trying to make more money. Um, <laughs> I actually, you don't have to buy them for me. I'm kidding. Of course. But 
I will be staying after to watch the Red Stars, of course, win against San Diego. This Red Stars game will be uh, definitely a way to, to figure out what's going right and what's going wrong or what's go- what's doing well what's working for the red stars because um the first game against san diego i believe they lost and san diego's top of the table really good team and all the people from international duties will be back so we got bianca st george we've got um mal pew Alyssa Nair. Who else are we missing? Is it just two? Three? I don't know. Our international people that were on international duty will be coming back, but that's also the same for San Diego, who's doing well without their star players. So this game is really important because Chicago are sitting third at the t- in the table. Chicago can, I believe, go above Portland with second. And if San Diego win, then they will be five points above everybody else, maybe four. So it's a really, really important game. And I think Chicago can do well. I have faith in them. Also, my friends are coming in from out of town, and I'm super, super excited to see Jack and AJ from the final third. My favorite soccer talking buddies. Super, super excited to see them. And maybe we'll cover the game together. We'll see. Maybe we'll do a live show. We'll we'll see. But um, thanks for listening today about everything. (laughs) everything thank you thank you first of all for supporting um this show would not be where it is today without the people that listen to it the people that give critiques the people that give advice the people that help out this show would not be where it is today without you so thank you um that's gonna be it for me i'm gonna mentally prepare myself to watch this Canada US game tonight to see who claims that spot to go to the Olympics and who has to go to a playoff game to determine who gets that other spot on the Olympics. Um, personally, I have no faith in the United States at this point. Um, poor Lo- Rose Lavelle and Lindsay Horan, who, you know, I wonder if their ACLs still work. Um, don't play injured players. I don't know. Utilize other talent that you have. You can literally pick from a pool of dozens of other players, and yet you still decide to play players that are freaking injured. That's going to be it for me today. I don't know what next week's episode is going to be. Probably a pre recorded one that I've done from last month, uh, which is a really good episode. I think because I said that I'm going to put it out next week, that I will. Depends if I film another interview in time. I will not. Um, But thank you again for your support and for listening to me today. Um, But before we are done, I just remembered. I will be reading to you this week's um, Bet Her segment. Because I guess Derek entrusts in me to talk about women's sports betting. So here we go. Are you ready for this? I'm not. Uh, this week's tip for people who want to bet on women's sports brought to you by betherd.com is all about how you should not find one sports betting app you like and stick to it. In this regard, it can literally pay to be a free agent. While legal sports books are subject to a number of regulations, laws don't dictate the odds for the most part. That means sports books are, by and large, free to post whatever odds they like for sporting events, and odds can be different from one app to the next on the same bet. If you have active accounts for multiple sports books, you can compare the odds to find the best price for the bet you want to make. 
If you restricted yourself to just one app, on the other hand, your only choices are to either accept that book's odds or not bet. By the way, choosing not to bet can be the best play in many circumstances, no matter how generous the odds might seem. Now that we've talked about the upside to letting sports books compete for your money, let's take a look at what events you might do some line shopping on this week. The Amundi Evian Championships from Evian Liban, France, keeps the LPGA Tour moving starting on Thursday, July 21st. Sportsbook should have winners and other futures available soon. Hannah Goldie and Molly McCann face each other in the UFC Octagon on Saturday, July 23rd as a part of UFC Fight Night 208's main card. Sportsbooks have McCann as a favorite in the flyway bout. While there are no NWSL matches this week, there is still plenty of soccer. The quarterfinals for the 2022 UEFA Women's European Championship begin on Wednesday, July 20th and continue through Saturday. Also, the 2022 CONMEBOL Copa America Femenina finishes its group stage matches on Wednesday and Thursday with the fifth place contest coming on Sunday. The WNBA season rolls on this week with at least one game every day but Monday. Check your favorite sports bettings on the mornings of the games for lines. Remember, previews for many of these events and more information on how to bet on women's sports legally and safely is available for free on bethear.com. That's B-E-T hyphen H-E-R dot com. Thank you again to Bet Her for sponsoring this season of Women's Sports Matter. Again, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Women's Sports Matter. Again, make sure to go out and support your local women's sports teams. And good luck to Minnesota Aurora, who will be taking on Tormenta FC in the W League final this upcoming weekend. As you all know, I am, I guess, an owner, community owner of Minnesota Aurora. So I'm a little biased. Best of luck to both teams, but you know I'm cheering for Minnesota, okay? Okay. Go and support your local women's sports team. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Women's Sports Matter. My name is Gianna Castro, and I am your host. I'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye.